This video will demonstrate a technique for restoring a cavitated occlusal carious lesion. There are many techniques for managing occlusal carious lesions. This is one such technique and is one that is taught in the Dundee Dental School and Hospital. It must be noted that the main way to manage carious lesions in the dentition is to in fact manage the caries disease process from a patient point of view. This means we should always identify the etiological factors responsible for causing the patient to develop caries lesions and help the patient to modify these. Management of caries will be covered in different parts of the course. It must be noted that entering the restorative cycle should be avoided as far as possible. Restorative interventions are indicated when cavitated caries lesions are either non-cleansable or can no longer be sealed. When a restoration is indicated, the priorities are preserving healthy and remineralizable tissue, achieving a restorative seal, and maintaining pulpal health. This will maximize the success of the restoration. The objective of caries tissue removal is to create conditions for a long-lasting restoration. This is achieved by providing enough space for the restorative material and clear peripheral margins, allowing the lesion to be sealed from the oral environment. Bacterially contaminated or demineralized tissues close to the pulp do not need to be removed. In deeper lesions, the priority is preserving pulpal health. In primary or permanent teeth, selective removal of soft dentine should be performed. In permanent teeth, stepwise removal is an option as well, and this will be covered in other parts of your course. In shallow or moderately deep lesions, restoration longevity becomes more important. Selective removal to firm dentine is carried out. This will leave us with the leathery dentine, where you have a feeling of resistance to a hand excavator. For all cavity preparations, the cavity margins and peripheral dentine are left hard after removal. This allows placement of a durable restoration and a tight seal by maximizing retention of the restorative material on good quality dentine. For all preparations, carious tissue is only left on the base of the cavity, over the pulp, to avoid exposure and stress to the pulp, promoting pulpal health. Now, for this video, let's look at a tooth with an occlusal carious lesion. Here we can see a simulated drawing of a tooth. Better yet, let's look at the cross-section of this tooth and a section of a real tooth as well. Here we can see the approximate extent of the lesion. I have outlined it here with the peripheral lines that you can see on the section. When we consider where the pulp is, there really is not much dentine separating it from the carious lesion. Here you can see an approximation of where the pulp would be in a three-dimensional plane respective to this tooth. Remember that this section is only a 2D representation of a 3D object. Previously, we practiced non-selective or complete carious tissue removal. This would have removed a lot of tooth and potentially compromised or even exposed the pulp. Here you can see how much tissue would have been removed for this situation. Non-selective removal of carious tissue would also structurally weaken the tooth. However, if we selectively remove the soft carious dentine and demineralize enamel, but leave the tissue overlying the pulp, we can conserve the tooth tissue, protecting the pulp and still creating a seal that prevents lesion progression. It's important to note when we're preparing a cavity and managing this carious lesion, we must base our decision on the texture of it. The color of the dentine should not be used as a guide when determining what tissue should be removed. We must remove the soft, loose dentine and then feel and keep that firm, leathery dentine. Here we can also see what the occlusal view may look like. Here you can see a representation of what the restoration would look like. We can see that we've got the restoration sealing the lesion, bonded to sound enamel, and effectively preventing the carious tissue overlying the pulp from gaining any access to nutrients from the oral environment.